Question number seven. It does. Ian McKelvey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, what is the uh, to Order. the Minister for Economic Development? What is the government doing to encourage economic growth? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the government's comprehensive business growth agenda includes more than 350 initiatives aimed at assisting businesses with the six things they need to be internationally competitive. Access to innovation, to capital, to skilled workers, to the necessary resources, the supporting public infrastructure and, of course, markets in which to sell their products. It's things like rolling out ultra-fast and rural broadband to connect our cities and regions to the world. It's equipping our kids with the skills they need to succeed, lifting R&D with things like PGP, and it's signing free trade agreements like the TPP to give New Zealand businesses the best shot at competing on the world stage. Mr Speaker, these things coupled with stable and sensible macroeconomic and fiscal settings, keeping interest rates lower, uh, providing the businesses the opportunity and confidence to invest and grow and to employ more Kiwis. <clears throat> Supplementary question, Ian McKelvey. Thank you, Mr Speaker. How has the New Zealand economy performed with these settings and initiatives in place? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, it's a very good question, Mr Speaker. Despite twin challenges of the Canterbury earthquake and the global financial crisis, along with the more recent slump in dairy prices, the New Zealand economy is showing its resilience and strength. Even with dairy exports down $3 billion last year, our total exports were up by nearly $2 billion, or 60, $69.3 billion, and that's a $4.9 billion increase in non-dairy exports. Our meat sector is growing. Their exports are up around 10 per cent. Wine, seafood, fruit and wool all growing. The ICT sector, ICT services import, uh, exports. Also tourism, where the numbers of visitors are up by around 11 per cent. So we're seeing growth across the country. The average growth rate that the Reserve Bank is predicting for the next two years is 3 per cent a year. And unemployment has fallen to its lowest level in seven years, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, David Seymour. Uh, what contribution did the government's 2010 tax cuts make to this growth? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, the government believes that's an important contribution because the tax changes in 2010 uh, they did the exercise of uh, rewarding hard work and actually taxing consumption a little bit more, which shifted the balance in, in favour of work and investment. So those are good outcomes, and along with all the other initiatives that the government is doing, we think the record is strong that New Zealand is growing at one of the fastest rates in the OECD right now. Supplementary question, David Seymour. In light of that, has the Minister made any representations to his ministerial colleagues uh, that the government should cut taxes again? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, the member raises a fair question, and of course, if we had the fiscal room, we're being clear that we would like to reduce the tax burden on New Zealanders over time, because that does provide the incentives for people to work hard and get ahead. Uh, but of course, government has a range of uh, uh, needs to address, and of course, the budget comes up every year, and that's the opportunity we get to assess those things. Supplementary question, Ian McKelvey. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Has the government rejected any alternative approaches to running the New Zealand economy? Honourable Stephen Joyce. Mr Speaker, yes, we have rejected a number of potential alternative approaches, often short-term fixes made uh, on the hoof suggestions, which would have no regard to the wider impacts of the economy. For example, policies like a single buyer model for the power industry was one we rejected. Uh, regulating food prices by dictating what's healthy and what's not, we rejected. Uh, hitting farmers with a punitive emissions trading scheme and a capital gains tax, we rejected that one. And just yesterday, we saw a proposal for the government to set interest rates, removing banks' ability to compete with one another and presumably meaning compulsory interest rate hikes. Those are the sort of knee-jerk reactions we reject. Question.